Uh, lapping of all the valves is finished now. I've got all of them installed, including the spring assemblies, which is, uh, again, pretty easy when you have a valve spring compressor tool like that one. Uh, with the valves in, what I can do to check and see if the lapping has been effective is to put a dry towel down, put my cylinder head on top of that, pour some mineral spirits down into these intakes, and I can do the same on the exhaust side, and then let this stand for a while. Then what I can do is come back, lift this up, and see if any of that mineral spirits liquid is seeped its way through that valve seat and onto this towel. And I'll, you know, I'll see it. It'll be a, a round wet spot right under whatever valve happens to be still a little bit leaky. I will definitely need to respec all the shims. Since these are all new valves, it means all the valve clearances are going to be different now. And, uh, you know, that'll be, an, uh, that'll be a procedure I do when I go to install all this uh, back into the motor assembly. Alright, piston reassembly. Uh, I got most of my replacement parts. I haven't got them all yet, but I have enough to show you uh, what I'm going to do to uh, get these pistons uh, all back together. So, if you remember when I took the piston assemblies out, I bagged them so I know which piston, conrod, and associated parts go with which cylinder. This is really important. And I'll be rebagging these once I do all the replacement parts. So real quick, uh, this piston, which is cylinder num comes from cylinder number two, is still uh, mostly all together. So what I'm going to be doing is replacing the piston, replacing the wrist pin, the clips that hold the wrist pin in, and the big end bearings. And the only uh, challenging part of this is determining which size or type of big end bearings that you need to replace with and keeping those straight. They come in different sizes or colors and you got to make sure you replace them with the correct ones. We'll go through that real quick. So I'll just complete a real quick disassembly on this one. These clips that hold in the, uh, the wrist pin are throwaways. So in terms of removing those clips, I'm not really trying to be gentle. When I put them back in, I'll be a lot more gentle. All I'm doing is lifting and, and twisting to pull them out. All right, I'm going to replace the piston, so I'm not even going to bother pulling the rings out of it. Um, all right, let's remove and talk about the big end bearings. So removal is uh, very straightforward. There's a notch on each one that fits into a little companion uh, opening. You just get a small tool. Don't touch the actual bearing surface. Just get behind it, pull it out. And the same thing on the cap. Get this in here and just start to pull it up a little bit and it'll kind of just pop itself right out since I'm throwing these away. So those are gone. Now, Yamaha provides four different size big end bearings. How do you know which ones to get? Well, you have to go through the procedure in the factory manual that shows how you compute which size bearings go into each of your connection rod assemblies. I'm not going to go through the whole procedure here, but you take numbers that are on your crankshaft, you take numbers that are printed onto your connection rod and then you apply a formula which gives you a resulting number. You take that number and that maps to a particular set of big end bearings that you purchase from Yamaha. Each set is color coded. Now here's the nice thing. It's probably going to be hard to see on the camera but Yamaha actually puts a small amount of that exact color on the bearing and in this case what I can see is there's a white strip of, right on the edge and on my new bearings that I've ordered same thing each of these has a strip of white 
right on the big end bearing. So the simplest method is pull the ones off, look and see what color they are, order that color. Also, when you order these from Yamaha, they don't come as a set. You've got to order two in order to get both halves. I actually ordered the wrong number. So I have to go back and reorder a bunch more big end bearings. But there's two white right there, which will be the two that I reuse to replace the old white ones with. Okay, let me show you up close how I'm getting these new clips uh, set uh, into the piston itself. And uh, I start on one side and I put the clip in first. So what I've been doing is I'll eventually want it to where the clip sits into the internal ring about like that with the open end sort of in this in this direction facing straight up. Start by inserting the clip on its end right about there and notice it'll stick out like this. Now push and you have to push pretty hard to where you get that ring to then go up against this piston here. All right, once you do that, take your little screwdriver and then push this just like this the rest of the way at the bottom here so that the ring falls into its channel. That should leave just this top piece here sticking out. And then all I have to do is push down, nice and easy, you don't want to stick yourself, but you kind of put it here, put your screwdriver here, and, and you'll gently push down and in until this top part falls in like that. Then you often need to go in here and just push the pin in, push that clip in just that little bit, and then it'll fall in its channel. That's all there is to it. And then once you get the, the uh, wrist pin in, with the conrod in here, you'll repeat that same procedure over here um, exactly the same way. All right, let's go ahead and assemble uh, this piston from cylinder two. Uh, so we lubricate with straight engine oil. In this case, I'm using a petroleum-based oil uh, because I'm rebuilding the motor. And then once the motor breaks in, we'll, we'll switch it over to synthetic. So I've already installed one side of the little retainer clip in the piston and now we need to insert the wrist pin and the connection rod and there's an orientation to this. There's a small arrow on the piston. With that arrow pointing up, the connection rod should be oriented so that the side that begins with a Y is aligned. And then we insert the pin. I've already lubricated all the other surfaces here as well. Let's get the wrist pin started. Oops, started on the wrong side there. Okay, there we go. Uh, where's my arrow? There's my arrow. There's my Y side of my connection rod. And we'll get those to fit together. Push that wrist pin all the way down. And now the last part is inserting this little retaining clip. New wrist pin, new clips, arrow up, Y side of the connection rod, and then my new big end bearings installed here. So at this point, this piston assembly is pretty much ready to go. The rings, of course, will have to go in. Uh, I'll do that when I get my cylinders back. They're uh, on their way back to me now. Uh, there's the cap nuts, which are still in here. I'm reusing those cap nuts that fit on the end here. And as far as the older components, I'm throwing all those away. There's no use in keeping them. But there's a completed piston assembly sands the ring. So I'm going to repeat this four times. I'm going to rebag these so that I know where they go back to. Do that four times, I'll be ready for when my cylinder gets back.